Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick, bite-sized concepts and basic medical sciences for study and rapid review. This video is on the muscles of respiration and how the chest wall moves during respiration. The breathing cycle involves taking air into the lungs, that's inspiration, and breathing it out, expiration. This involves changes in the volume of the thoracic cavity, and that happens by change in its dimensions, vertically, anteroposteriorly, and to some extent transversely. How does this happen? The ribs and the sternum move. The ribs are hinged at the back and they angle downwards to attach to the sternum. So they can move to change the diameters from front to back and sideways. But what about vertically? That's the diaphragm. That is the muscle of respiration. It sort of takes on the entire load itself. Inspiration is active. Muscles actually actively have to contract for it to happen. Expiration is passive. The lungs have elastic properties, so it results in recoil when it stretches. So in quiet expiration, the muscles used during inspiration just relax. So let's start with the diaphragm. Most of the work of inspiration is done by the diaphragm alone. When it contracts, it flattens, so the vertical dimension will increase. The lungs expand and air enters the lungs. During expiration, the opposite happens. The diaphragm relaxes, the thoracic volume reduces, the lungs contract and air gets out. The rib cage can move up or down. And since they're attached to the sternum, when the ribs move up, the sternum moves forward. That increases the diameter from front to back. When the ribs come down, the sternum will fall back and the diameter reduces. So ribs move up and sternum moves forward in inspiration. The ribs come down, the sternum falls back in expiration. The upper ribs move with the pump handle movement. So it moves the sternum up and down and increases the anteroposterior diameter. The lower ribs have a bucket handle movement that increases the transverse diameter. But what moves the ribs? Muscles. So the muscles that elevate the ribs will be those of inspiration and those that depress the ribs will be those of expiration. So in addition to the diaphragm, the external intercostal muscles are muscles of inspiration. They are attached to the ribs and directed forwards and downwards to attach to the rib below. So sort of like the direction of your hands when you put them in your jacket pockets. So because of the direction of these fibers, when they contract, the ribs move up. Now these two muscles are good enough during regular inspiration, but when a little extra effort is needed, more muscles might be required, like in respiratory distress. These are called accessory muscles. They are accessory and start working when needed. Most of the muscles that attach to the ribs can serve as accessory muscles, so all the muscles of the chest wall some that are easy to remember start with the letter S, like the sternocleidomastoid, which like the name suggests, originates from the sternum and the clavicle. So it can lift the sternum, which is helpful during inspiration. The others are the serratus anterior and the scalene muscles. So like I said, any muscle of the chest wall can contribute, like the pectoral muscles, the transversus thoracic muscles, etc. Now that was all inspiration. And like I said, it's active, so there's a lot of muscles. Quiet expiration, remember, is passive. So quiet expiration doesn't need the muscles to move. If muscles are being used, it's because extra effort is needed. And these are again accessory muscles. So these muscles have to depress the ribs to reduce the volume. Now the external intercostals handle inspiration. Here the internal intercostals play a role. They are also attached to the ribs, but their direction changes. They're downwards and backwards. So it makes sense that the action that they have on the ribs is the opposite. They depress the ribs. The ribs can also be depressed by contraction of abdominal muscles, the rectus abdominis, the external and internal obliques, the transversus abdominis. They pull the ribs down and also increase intra-abdominal pressure. So they can also elevate the diaphragm. And if the lung gets smaller, it forces more air out. 
The nerve supply to these muscles is important, particularly the diaphragm. The diaphragm is supplied by the phrenic nerve, which originates from C3, C4, and C5. If there's damage to this nerve, there can be diaphragmatic palsy, which makes it difficult to breathe. So let's put it all together. Inspiration is active. Most of the job is done by the diaphragm. Also, the external intercostals. They move the ribs up and the sternum forwards. Accessory muscles are the sternocleidomastoid, the scalene muscles, serratus anterior, and other muscles of the chest wall. Expiration quietly is passive. It's from elastic recoil. The muscles of inspiration relax. If extra effort is needed, muscles come into play. The muscles of the abdominal wall and the internal intercostals. They pull the ribs down and the sternum falls backwards. So E for I and I for E if you get confused. And those are the muscles of respiration and how the chest moves during respiration. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.